Oh no, have I broke it? Oh yeah, that actually looks sick. Touch screen. Yeah, touch screen. Loads better than yours. That is loads better than mine. Yeah, it actually is. So there's no denying it, I am a big BMW fanboy. And I haven't had too many cars, but I've now had three BMWs. So I am currently sat in a BMW 4 Series, a 2018 one to be precise. And as you'll see, the interior on this is not much different to my 2008 BMW 1 Series. All of the seats, the armrest, the switch gear, the dash look exactly the same. So personally, I think there's two main things which make that 2018 4 Series a little bit nicer inside than my 2008 1 Series. The first thing being the steering wheel, which we're going to have to come back to in another video. But secondly, is the lack of the screen and the lack of the connectivity and you know, the modern features on this car. So in this video, I'm going to be attempting to fit this new iDrive style screen into the dashboard on my old E82 135i. Let's go. So what we have here is an Apple CarPlay iDrive style screen which is designed to go in the dash of the E82. And the kit also comes with some trim removal tools, plenty of wires, some more wires, some nuts, bolts and screws, some more wires, a couple more wires, and also a little fascia too. And also it does actually come with a template for cutting your dash, but I'm hoping, because I've got the storage bin on mine, that I don't have to do that, but I'm not 100% sure yet. But one thing which is super sweet is the fact there is zero instructions, so I'm just gonna have to wing the hell out of it, so please bear with me. So because I have zero idea what most of this does really, I think what I need to do is get this plugged in and then see which of these wires I'm actually gonna need and use and then go from there. So the first thing that we had to do was remove the storage bin. There's four Torx bits holding this in. Two of them were accessible just by opening it, but the other two, you have to remove the air vent just underneath it to be able to get to. So this just pops out using those provided trim tools, and then there's a very fiddly plug on the back of it, which isn't the easiest to remove. So once that was out, we could easily access the two bolts which were left holding in the storage bin. There was also an electrical connector underneath this which I have no idea what it does, but anyway, that can now go because that's being replaced by the new screen. Next up, we have to access the wires behind the radio, so that means that we've got to remove everything that's going to get in the way of us doing that. So first thing to come off was the heater controls, which are just clipped in, so again using those trim removal tools just popped out and then the electrical connectors on the back. And then there was two Phillips head screws holding in the radio. Right, so I think it's now stripped down as much as it needs to be stripped down. I've got the heater controls out, I've got the radio out, got the air vents out and also got the dash uh, whatever you call that, storage bin thing out too. So I think my plan of action now is to plug in the new unit and see what works and what doesn't or you know see if it's just a plug and play unit which I doubt it is but yeah we'll do that and go from there. So I think now the next thing to do is power it up and one, I want to see how it looks, I'm kind of buzzing for that, and two, to see what works. Oh, okay, it's on, it's on, it's on. All right, you can shut up. Yes. It's taking its time. Okay, oh yeah, that actually looks sick. No way, it's actually like quite similar to what you'd find in the new Beamers, so yeah, that's quite cool. Well, it works, so... Oh, there's actually quite a lot on it as well. So that's already actually linking up to the car, because it's actually got my mileage down here, but in kilometres, so I've got 200,000 kilometres on this car. It's still going strong. Um, and it's got the, uh, the degrees, the time and everything, all that's working already, so... I think I'm going to see if I can get the maps working with my phone and you know use the Apple CarPlay like, functionality of it and if I can do that if I can play music my apps work I'm not too bothered about the reversing camera stuff it doesn't phase me too much I just want music maps and all this so if that works we're in it's plug and play okay so this has been saying this for quite a while now my phone says it's connected but the screen's not but in the meantime while that's doing its thing what would you guys do with this now because 
This stereo should be kind of sort of useless now, even though it'll be reinstalled. Would you guys replace this just to fix the screen, or would you just get another knob to put on it and leave it as it is, because you're going to be using this anyway? Let me know what you do in the comments down below. Right, I don't know what I've just done, but it's magically just started working. The only thing I've found which I don't think is that cool is the fact that the audio basically works off a, an aux in cable that you have to plug in down here somewhere. So you're gonna route that under the dash and then have a wire sticking out, but that's pretty minor. The Apple CarPlay wasn't working for, it's gotta be a good hour now, and then mysteriously, bang, there it is, it's working. So that's all right. So most of these wires and everything I don't really need, but there is one thing which confused me for a little while on the back of this screen, which is this cable here. And it turns out that is for the iDrive controller, which we can't have in right-hand drive models because it doesn't fit. So if you've got a left-hand drive car, I think you get a little iDrive controller to control all that. Unfortunately, us right-hand drive lots, we've got to deal with touchscreens. So anyway, I figured that out. So also, there's one thing that I didn't realise again because the you know the kit comes with no instructions. There's a green and black cable here which you have to remove from the back of the old harness and move into the back of the new one to go into the back of the radio. So apart from that, it was actually pretty easy. The main faff was trying to get Apple CarPlay to work. Anyway, it all seems to be working. It just works off that one plug on the back and then you've got all the extra stuff for cameras and all that, but all seems to be working now. So I can put that up there, get everything bolted back in and it, you know, it should look all right. It should look pretty gangster. So this was one of the most time consuming parts of this job, which is essentially just running the new wires to exactly where they need to be. So we needed to run one harness up top to where this new screen's gonna go. And there was also some of the wires to run as well. Then we could start getting the fascia ready to be fitted. There was some metal adapters essentially, which fit into the plastic here. And then that allows it to be bolted into the original placement for that storage bin. The next cable to run was for the microphone, so I wanted to put this as near to the driver's head as possible, so I thought on the A-pillar trim was probably a good spot. To be able to get that out, we just popped out the air vent right next to the driver's door and also removed the speedo cluster, ran the wire through there, and then tucked it behind the trim. Then it was time to install the fascia, which goes exactly where the storage bin bolts go. Again, they're a little bit different to get to now that fascia's there, but you know they go in exactly the same holes. And then it was time to install the screen, so just plugging in all of the wires. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what some of them did, but I thought because I've got them, I may as well stick them on. So once those were all plugged in, there was two bolts holding this in place onto the fascia. So the next thing was to reinstall the radio. We just had to tuck some of the wire in in order to get the radio to fit back into place. And then it just had those two Phillips head screws holding it in. Even though I didn't have to remove this trim to get the radio out, I did have to remove it to put it back in. So it's just on clip, so it just pops off, but all it needed to get back on was my trim hammer. And then finally on the home stretch, we could reconnect all the heater controls, making sure everything's plugged in correctly, and then reinstall that. So the last trim to go in was this air vent, which you have to be careful because there's a lot of wires behind there now for the new screen. You have to make sure you took those out of the way properly before fitting this. And lastly, the final bit is just tucking the auxiliary cable from the back of the screen into the aux in for the car. Okay, Liam's here to give his review. First power up, fingers crossed, I've put everything back right and it's gonna work, so I'm not taking all that out again. Ready? I am more than ready. Uh, a... What's that about? <laughs> Why is it bonging out there? Oh no, have I broke it? Hey, that's pretty mm. suave, isn't it? Oh, that's that, nice, like that's that. nice, that's nice. Can't see that where you're touch going. Touch screen. Yeah, touch screen. Loads better than yours. That is loads better than mine. It actually is. 
You got, apart from you've got to reach all the way across to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's a bit of a stretch, <laughs> that is. That's like that outer Mongolia kind of stretch. Yeah. That's good, it's good. You see if CarPlay works. So we're still having some problems with it. It's all, everything's working as it should, apart from like the software, because I can't seem to get my phone to link up and use Apple CarPlay every single time. We've just spent, what, half an hour? Half an hour, easy. Half yeah. an hour, and then it randomly just works. Like, we've tried to find ways to update it, but it doesn't seem to be having it, but, well, anyway, looks cool. Can't see where I'm going. <laughs> Sick, let's go bed. Okay. <laughs> so we just spent all, is he pure getting in shot? So we spent a lot of last night and quite a bit of this morning trying to figure out why we couldn't get the Apple CarPlay to work along with a bunch of the other bits and bobs. So it turns out what you need to have it working is your Bluetooth firstly connected to the, to the right thing uh, and also on the Wi-Fi you need to be connected to the screen's own Wi-Fi which makes absolutely zero sense to me but that's the only way I've managed to get the CarPlay working. So. That's a big tick. It all seems to work kind of as it should and be able to get to all of my bangers. So that's cool. So yeah, one thing I'm still struggling to figure out is how to keep it on the Wi-Fi network. So I can turn the Wi-Fi on here, then connect it to the hotspot on my phone so I can watch videos and things like that on there. But it just, as soon as you seem to be on it, it turns straight off, which is pretty sick. So I'm sure there's something in there which, a stupid setting or something like that, that I've got to get around, but I'm gonna go for a drive now, see what I think of it, and I'll let you know in a minute. Okay, so now I've got a little bit more used to the screen, and I'm getting on with it a little bit better now than I was at first. So I've already got the hack sorted for Apple CarPlay and getting that to work, so that's a win. Uh, and I'm sure there's a few things that over time I'll get used to doing and be able to work much better. It would be handy though if, <laughs> if the whole thing came with instructions, I'm not gonna lie. So in terms of usability, you know, it's not the easiest, but again, that would be helped by having instructions, but I am getting the hang of it. And it definitely does look better than just having a storage bin there, but I would say it is a little bit visually impairing for that sort of area while you're driving, but again, I'm sure over time you get used to it being there and you don't even notice it. And it is nice now to have some connectivity and, you know, have all your maps and everything like that in, you know, a convenient place and it definitely does make the interior of the car feel a lot newer as well. So uh, this definitely isn't a review video because I'm not any good at that sort of stuff but I want to let you guys know what my opinion is of it just briefly. Um, looks wise I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. It looks a lot smarter than just having that storage bin there and it's quite nice to have all those modern touches on your dashboard like the newer cars. So yeah, so that's just a fairly solid rating. In regards to usability, it's getting a four. It wasn't the easiest to set up. There were zero instructions and you do just have to sort of wing it and use what videos there are on YouTube and kind of work your way around the rest. And also another thing is you've always got to reach for the screen to be able to do it, which is a little bit of a stretch if I'm trying to find faults to pick. So it would be nice to have that iDrive controller, but unfortunately you can only get that to work with left-hand drive cars because of the way that the trim is. In regards to installation, that's getting a six. In this one, it was actually pretty easy. Again, not helped by the fact there was no instructions but do bear in mind if you've not got the storage bin up here it's going to be a bit more problematic because you're going to have to cut your dash in order to do it but if you have got that storage bin it just drops into place super easy so uh yeah that was that was quite nice so i've now just got the screen mirroring working but again that's also a little bit temperamental but again hopefully i can make that work a bit more consistently and you know make it not so much of a pain in the ass but i can now watch my favourite YouTuber, Chris Slicks, uh, no, at, at my own leisure. So there we have it. I have now got that Apple CarPlay screen installed in the E82135i. And that is the first modification really for this car, but that's definitely not going to be the last. But before I carry on modifying the car, there's still some mechanical repair to do. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. Smash the like button and I'll see you in the next video.